Okay, hi and welcome to um, our special cases notes. We're going to go ahead and learn how to factor by special cases. Um, you'll notice at the top here I've written factoring by seeing a pattern. We're going to notice a pattern. We'll do it with multiplication. And then we're going to go ahead and do the opposite of that by factoring back to this original part. Here's the thing though. Also notice my note up here at the top says don't worry. Grouping always works. This is special cases. It makes it quicker if you can see it. It's helpful sometimes, but not necessary by any means. Um, there is one case that we do want to make sure that we pay special close attention to, which is difference of squares. But again, all of this can be done without this pattern. This is just a helpful hint. So let's take a look. What we're going to do is we're going to look at something that we're familiar with, which is multiplying. Just did that. We should be pretty good at it. And you'll notice that I've got two binomials here, x plus 8 and x plus 8. Um, you'll notice that I've got a couple different versions of it. Here's d minus 3 and d minus 3. What I'd like to draw to your attention, if our binomials happen to be the same, so here's a linear factor binomial, right? x plus 8, that's one factor. Here's another fa factor, x plus 8. If they're the two factors are the same, if they're exactly the same, we can write them as x plus 8 squared. Binomial squared, okay? d minus 3 squared. Binomial squared. The last one you'll notice it's the same except for our addition and subtraction sign in the middle of our binomials and that's a special case we really want to pay attention to. But let's look at this multiplication pattern of these binomial squares. So we've done this before with the distributive property and if we take and take this first term and multiply it to the first term and the other one, follow the arrows like we've done before, you'll notice that we get x times x, x squared. x times 8, 8x. 8 times x, 8x, 8 times 8, 64. The pattern that I want you to start to notice is that the first term, if it's a binomial square, meaning the same factor times the same factor, that first term will always be a perfect square, always. It'll always work out that way. Coincidentally, the last term will always be a perfect square. So that's kind of a nice little pattern. So if we ever see these binomial squares, we know that the first term when we multiply this out will always be x squared. And we know that the last term in this binomial when we multiply it out will be 8 squared or 64. That's a pattern. It'll always be that way. It always works. The middle term is just as interesting. If we look at the middle term here, we'll notice that we get an x times an 8 and an 8 times an x. They'll always be the same value. 8x plus 8x. And if you move over a little bit, negative 3d times negative 3d. It'll always be the same value or the middle value double. And that's the pattern we want to see. That middle pattern doubled and the first two and the first and last terms are perfect squares. Okay? We're going to try to use that pattern to factor with now. So let's take a look at down below here. All right, so now that we kind of have the pattern down in our heads, let's take a look at my note here. So the square of a binomial, we'll give you the official look. Um, is any binomial a plus b, again, like x plus 8, squared, meaning multiplied by itself. The pattern that comes out is that first term is a perfect square of whatever that first term is in our squared binomial. So this a value here will always be a perfect square when we multiply it out. And vice versa, this b value will always be itself squared. Number, letter, variable, doesn't matter. It's times itself. The middle term for our pattern has to be a multiplication of the first term in our binomial squared by our second term in our binomial squared doubled or times two. So if you look here back up at one of our first examples where it says also written as x plus eight squared, we would take x times eight or eight x and square it or not square, excuse me, we would double it times two. So or 16 x. That would be our multiplication. We wouldn't have to do any arrows. We would just know, hey, it's x squared plus 8 times x, 16x doubled, right, plus 64. And we wouldn't have to multiply it out. We would just see it and know it. That's the pattern. If there's a subtraction sign in the middle, notice the only difference is that there's a negative for your middle term. But it's identical, okay? That's the great thing about this pattern. It's pretty easy to remember, and it's easy to do without actually multiplying anything out. And you're like, Mr. Hallam, well, these are super easy. Well, yeah, these are the easy ones, but this pattern works on the tough ones as well. That's really where it shines. So the only one that's a little bit of an oddball is our difference of squares. So this is the square of a binomial, right? A plus B or A minus B squared. Simple, exactly the same times itself. Difference of squares is kind of what it says. 
here's a linear factor with an addition sign and then a subtraction sign of the same one. So they have to be opposite signs for this one to work. And this is the, actually the easier of the three patterns. Because if you happen to have that, the exact same values with an opposite sign in the middle, your middle term will drop out. It just so happens if you look up here when we multiply it out, if we go back up here, you'll notice that we get a negative 4x from a multiplication and a positive 4x. And that whole center part, that whole linear term, drops to zero. So if you look here, it's gone. Our last term, though, because of this negative, when we multiply 4 times negative 4, becomes negative 16. So it is the square, but it's the negative square. This is actually the one that kids remember the most, right? They remember this difference of squares. So... Now that we have that down, let's see if we can do the reverse. And that's actually what this lesson is about, the factoring using this pattern. Okay, so now with the factoring portion of this, we're going to be given some form of a quadratic. Generally in three terms, of course, with difference of squares, you should only ever have two. That's one way that you can notice that one right away. So if you happen to be given this and you're asked to factor, and we can see it in the directions right here, and you notice that the first term is a perfect square, and you're like, well, x squared is a perfect square? Yeah, it's x times x. Of course it is. And 16 would be another clue, because 16 is a pretty noticeable perfect square, and you notice that it's 4. If this is then a perfect square binomial, or if the pattern will work on this, we should be able to take those two perfect squares, or x, and 4, and it's plus because the middle term is plus, so x plus 4. If we multiply those together, so x times 4, or 4x, and we multiply it by 2, if it's that middle term, then it is a binomial squared. Then you write those two perfect squares, and you square them. And you're done. Let's do another one so you can see it. So I'm going to check this. x squared, that's a perfect square, so I'm going to go ahead and start my process. The term that would make that perfect square would be x. This time it's a negative in the middle, so I'm going to pretend that this is a binomial squared. And then I'm going to check this last term. This last term is a 16. Again, perfect square of 4. So I'm going to write that. Now, if I multiply x times 4, which is 4x, and I double it, I get that middle term 8x, or I'm sorry, negative 8x in this case, right? x times negative 4 is a negative 4x, and then double it. That works. So it is a perfect square. That's how the pattern works. It's that simple. So, let's do one more. We're going to take a look at this. N, hey, that's a perfect square. And if it's not a perfect square, then you just go to your grouping method and you split it up into four terms. But, let's check that last term. 64, that happens to be a perfect square. 8's the number that works for that. Our middle term would be plus. All right, so now let's check. Is N times 8, or 8N, times 2, because we have to double it, right? Is it 16N? Of course it is. So, it is a perfect square. And that's the pattern. See how much faster that is to factor? Um, now that you've done grouping, it'll have taken you a little bit longer to do the grouping portion of it. Not difficult by any means, but that's quick if you know the pattern. So let's move down here then. This is difference of squares. This is the one that I want you to know. This one's actually very helpful, and sometimes it's, it's, it saves a lot of factoring issues. Now with difference of squares, you're looking for two things. One, again, perfect squares for the first and last term. 2, there is no middle term. 3, so here's 1. 2, no middle term, or linear term we can say. Or 3, that there's a negative in between. If it's a positive, you're done. Doesn't matter if the first and last term are perfect squares or not. Doesn't work. Has to be a negative. So you can see here that x is a perfect square. 64 is a perfect square of 8. And so if we find that that to be the case and there's a negative in the middle, we write our parentheses, one positive version of our linear factor, x plus 8, and one negative version of our linear factor, x minus 8. So let's try it on number 6. Again, x is a perfect square, so I'm going to write an x in there. It is a negative. My last term here is 36. That happens to be a perfect square. And we have a negative in the middle. We're all set. This is difference of squares. So I'm going to write one positive version and one negative version so easy to factor. Let's do one more with a coefficient of other than 1. So checking here, 4x to the 4th. Wait, Mr. Hallam, we've only done quadratics so far. It's okay. We said a perfect square. Can we find two values that multiply by itself to get to 4x to the 4th? Yeah, of course we can. Let me get my pen writing again. 2x squared, right? That would make 4x squared if I multiplied by itself. 121, it's one of those ones you may remember the perfect square of. That's 11, correct? So 
it happens to be a perfect square, there's a negative in the middle. So guess what? Difference of squares. So I'm just going to repeat that once positive, once negative, and I factored it. And that's a pretty tough one to factor otherwise. That made it much easier. Okay. And that's our notes. Um, and hopefully that made sense to you. If it doesn't, again, grouping will always work. But this one, this one here, the special case is difference of squares. That one you do want to make sure that you kind of know. All right. Well, nice chatting with you. We'll see you tomorrow.